a uh, blowout on a tire, caught the tire on fire, caught the engine on fire, and the whole right wing burned up. It was on takeoff.
Russian affiliates live now on uh, Twitch Central. We have an update package to the 330. You can download that now, PY14FR, again, right now on Bit Central. Our updated 330 package regarding the FBI probe into Putin Junos. The Bit Central number is PY 14FR.
inside the area. Red 7, Red 5, and 9 are south of the Elgin area. Alright, Edge Bay. Where are you at, Randy?
It's the new switch to Police Live now on SD3. Hillary Clinton arriving in Des Moines, Iowa. Source is pool.
Source affiliates live now on FB2. The signal from the Donald Trump rally in Lisbon has uh, returned again. Live now on FB2. Donald Trump holds a rally in Lisbon.
ahead. No. Hey, what time is the official game start tonight? Is it 7 or 8 or anybody know? Then, yeah.
still hold 53 north of the Elgin from here, 1.6.
person short. Uh, we need a short person, otherwise. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah. See how crappy it's out. Yeah, I mean, if we have damage, we don't be fine. No, no, don't, don't worry about it. It's really easy. I, we'll, we'll be standing right here with you. All right. Um, and we just, we just want your name. My name is Gary. I was seating C-31E in the middle section of the plane. We started to take off. Uh, we didn't get in the air, and the right, it seemed like the right side engine blew. A uh, big bottle of fire. Um, everybody was so professional. The pilot stopped the plane perfect. And we all started exiting. It was kind of a coordinated chaos, but it was unbelievable how we got off that plane. Uh, what's that? Uh, this was crazy, guys. If you're ever flying, we were 30 seconds into the safety video about do not grab your luggage if in an emergency. And there's probably seven or eight people that stopped and went overhead and grabbed their luggage, which made everybody start falling forward. It could have caused a big problem. Don't get your luggage in a situation like Describe that. Describe the flames. How well, they were. it cracked the window on the right side of the plane. Uh, pretty big, pretty big flame, pretty big ball. First there was a clunk. After the clunk, the explosion, and then the plane stopped real fast, and we all just started exiting. It was a question. How did you exit? We all went to the left side of the plane because the fire was on the right side, and. Um, it was a little slow at first because everybody from the left, right side was coming over to the left side. But the, but the flight attendants were directing traffic and just unbelievable what they did. Sorry, were you, you injured at all? No. I, there were a few injuries that I saw from sliding down. I don't think there was anybody injured from the explosion that I saw. No burns? Nothing like uh, that? No, I don't think anything. The smoke was the worst thing. About halfway through getting out, the smoke started to get a little bit heavy. So. You get a deep breath to get some oxygen and you took in smoke and that was the scariest part of the whole thing. How long did it take you to get off the plane? Less than a minute. Unbelievable. Were you one of the first ones off? No, no. I was sitting in row 31. Were you, were you on the right side? or? The I was in the middle section. There was a, two two seats, two seats, and a three row, three seats in the middle. I was sitting right in the middle. I mean, what's going through your head as you're, as you're racing for the exit here? What's going through my head is 
flying. It's, you know, I hate to fly. And the worst thing happened that you can imagine when you're flying. 20 seconds later, we'd all been dead. Unbelievable. So what's your name? What's your last name? My name is Gary. Gary Washington. It doesn't matter. I don't well, was there ever a point you were afraid for your life? Of course. Of course. With this, I'm thinking the plane's going to blow up because there's a gas in the wings, isn't there? <laughs> were there children on the flight? Were there elderly? I was born in Chicago, but I don't live in Chicago. No, I, I live in Indiana. To, where were you trying to get to? To Miami. For a vacation or a business? No, to see my daughter. What are you going to do now? Are you trying to get out later? No, they just told us they're going to. Uh, we had an option to take a flight. They're just going to leave in about, I think, about 40 minutes. So they have arrangements. They have arrangements to, uh, for us to go on a flight tonight. Or if we didn't want to go tonight, we can make arrangements for later. And they said they'd call us and get our luggage to us and everything. Are else. you going to fly again? Of course. Can tonight? you describe again when you were No, home, not going to fly tonight. Off, just, did, did the plane get off the ground at all? Just walk us The turbine, were, you know, the motors were spinning like they always do, and it didn't take off yet. It just almost felt like it was going to, and then boom. That's, so, like I said, what, we weren't in the area. The boom was the engine or the Well, the I'm a, I don't know. I know there was an explosion on the right side of the wing, so I'm assuming it was the motor. It was the engine. I'm assuming. I can't. Was there a rattle? Like, this no, the, the, first there was a clunk, like uh, the like the uh, wind there was going up, but a lot harder than that. And then the explosion came seconds later. Did the passengers say anything or gasp? Or, or what, what did they do? Yeah, shit, yeah, they did. <laughs> of course, we're all going, oh my God, let's get out of here, you know? And we all were, that's it, it was organized chaos. Were there kids on this flight? There well, elderly? yeah, there were, and, and we were helping the kids. There was like nine, ten people that were just making sure to calm down, kind of keep some, you know, order to it. Was there an explosion uh, of, of any type that... Well, there was a big ball of red flames blew up from that window. That's all I can tell you. I was I got out of there as fast as I can, too, and we're all moving toward the exits. And, and when you looked out the window, what did you see? A big red ball of flame. And then when we got out of the plane, everything was on fire and the smoke. You've seen the videos, and we were just like in awe when we got out. So You said, you said a window cracked. Well, one of, the, one of the people that were on the plane that was sitting in that window seat said he saw the windows cracking a little bit because of the heat, I'm imagining. I didn't see it personally. I'm saying what he said. Was there, how, was there how smoke inside? you feel inside? to be standing here right now being able to talk about this? Well, I feel, I feel lucky, but I feel pretty unlucky it happened, you know? So, I, you know, I feel pretty unlucky it happened, but I feel lucky I'm here. Like, was so, was the 20 plane? seconds later, we'd have been up in the air, we'd have been done. So was the plane ever filled with smoke? Any smoke inside the plane? Yes, after about 30 or 40 seconds as we were moving out, that's when I felt the smoke come in. And yeah. that was like? It was like you, a very, I still smell it. It's in near my sinuses. How you know? far off the ground did he get? We didn't. He didn't. As far as I know, it was almost like he started to go and boom. So he never got off the ground. Uh, after we were all off the plane, the paramedics were there immediately. Uh, tending to the people that I think one guy, a guy that has a little belly like me, might have had a little heart seizure or a little heart thing, and a couple of people had some anxiety attacks, I think. A couple of people had some burns from sliding. I have to believe people were screaming, crying, what? What were people doing? Actually, no. Like I said, it was a pretty organized chaos. There was not a lot of screaming, not a lot of, you know, oh my God, it wasn't anybody was flying around. Some people were mad because they're getting their luggage, so they're saying, keep going, keep going, but nobody was. It was pretty, pretty organized. I was surprised. Probably. First time I've ever been involved in that. Who were you traveling with? You? Were you with family members? With my wife. Was she okay? Well, I don't know. She, she, we saw her walk over there. Because you were on she's, vacation? She's going mad vacation. because she can't see her daughter. Going, uh, my daughter's upset because we can't see her. So. Of course. But every time I get on the plane before this, which was hundreds of times, I always had that feeling of, wow, what if something would happen? Something finally happened. And Here's what I look at. You chose not to rebook and, and fly tonight. Well, because, only because uh, we have no luggage. It was only a three-day trip. I wouldn't get there till midnight. And I had to come back Monday. So, you know, we're going out on Thanksgiving or Christmas. It's not the end of the world. And, and, and just how grateful are you? What was it What was it emotionally like? I'm happy nobody got hurt. Yeah. Nobody, there was no fatalities. And like I said, right now, the emotion is I just want to get home. That's all. I'm when you were on the plane. Gary, Gary, we really need your last name. I mean, that, the, the, the account that you gave was just lent it some credibility. We need your last name. Last name is Shivoni. How do you spell that? Look it up. Shivoni. Can Gary. you tell, maybe, I'll, I'll, I may misspell it. Can you spell it? Anyway. O N E from Demise.
Lot, Indiana. Capital D, small e, capital M, O, C, T. One more time, Jim. S C H I A V as in Victor O N as in Nancy E of Demott, Indiana. Capital D, small e, capital M O T T. The safety video was playing at the time. Thirty seconds into the city, we're thirty seconds into the safety video.
attention moved to the lead slide down on SBC. President Obama taking the stage at a campaign event for Hillary Clinton in Orlando, Florida. So it's just cool. We're going live now on SBC. President Obama at the campaign event in Orlando for Hillary Clinton.
Sure. Uh, Ginger Evans, EVANS. I'm the Aviation Commissioner for the City of Chicago. Good afternoon. Um, I want to first thank and introduce uh, our first responders. Uh, Chicago Fire Department uh, is led by Chief Tim Sampy for the Aviation Department, and the Aviation Police Commander is Thomas O'Brien. Uh, our head of operations for the airport is Jonathan Leach, uh, and I first want to commend them for their very quick and very professional response uh, to this incident. Uh, I'm just going to say uh, a little bit about what we know happened very briefly. American Flight 383 was outbound to Miami, experienced a fire uh, at just about 2.35 this afternoon. There was no crash. The aircraft was on runway 28 right, attempting to depart to the west. As of 4 p.m., runway 28C was reopened for departures. That's the adjacent runway. Uh, runway 10 left, 28 right, uh, where the incident occurred, it remains closed uh, and will be for the time being. Uh, fortunately, we have a, a lot of runways at, at O'Hare, so operations are normal. We're basically uh, arriving on two runways on the north side of the airfield and departing on two runways on the south side of the airfield. Um, we're going to continue to work with our airline and uh, airport partners and our federal partners uh, to secure this incident and uh, uh, for all operations in the future. Thank you very much. So how many out of the eight runways are still are operational right now? Uh, to the, uh, right now, four. That's okay. all we need. Four out of eight are running. Four. Okay. four. Yeah, that's all, that's all we need for demand right now. Yep. Um, Juan, do you, you want Juan to answer that or Chief Sampy? Sure, sure. sure. And have you say your name and spell it, please? Okay. Timothy closer, Sampy. Closer, 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 please. please. Timothy Sampy, T-I-M-O-T-H-Y. S-A-M-P-E-Y, I'm the Assistant Deputy Fire Commissioner of Airport Operations. Sure. Uh, again, as the Commissioner pointed out, the time of day, the plane was on its aircraft roll. As it was rolling out, it aborted its takeoff in an ample time uh, to bring the aircraft to a complete stop on the runway. At that point in time, it was an indication from the air traffic control tower that it had a fire in the number two engine. At that point in time, the, the flight crew did an outstanding job of bringing the aircraft to a halt, uh, alerting all their, the cabin crew uh, that they were going to evacuate the aircraft, uh, knowing that the fire was on what would be the starboard side or the right side of the aircraft. They, they evacuated off the port side or the left side of the aircraft, 170 uh, persons and flight crew and a dog. Uh, they all safely evacuated out of half the exits on the, the port side, and they went into the grass. Uh, the variant injuries actually came from uh, the rapid uh, evacuation down the slides, uh, not uncommon that you have ankle injuries, uh, but everybody was able to self-evacuate. The fire department made a, a, a rapid entry into the aircraft to make sure that all were off uh, as soon as they got the fire knocked down on the starboard side, which was almost the immediate. Describe the intensity of the fire with the jet fuel. You know what, that's, uh, that's going to be an NTSB investigation. It's, it's an ongoing investigation, and actually we're still out there right now as we speak. Uh, chasing some hot spots around the aircraft, so we don't know what the actual cause is, and that couldn't might not be determined for a while. Can you describe? Again, he'll he'll give a breakdown on the on all the injuries. It's right now we're actually still re uh, evaluating people as we speak. Uh, the the proximity of the of the runway to with the aircraft uh, is probably about 60 seconds away from our closest rescue station. That's equipped with four RF units, an engine, and a truck. So they were on the scene within, uh, I mean, it was a rapid uh, deployment by the air traffic control tower on their ring down phone. As soon as they picked it up within, a, I'd say, probably a minute to a minute and a half, they were on scene applying foam to the burning engine and the wing. Can you describe the intensity of the, of the fire with the jet fuel and everything? Uh, you know what? Plane just taken off, uh, going to Miami, was fully loaded with fuel, 767, so roughly 43,000 pounds of fuel, so substantial amount of fuel on the aircraft, and it was leaking. So. Uh, they had a heavy volume of fire on the uh, on the, the both the engine and the entire wing all the way into the wing route. How, how many minutes? This, could, have been a lot worse. Uh, this, could, have been this a lot could have been uh, absolutely devastating if it happened later, if it happened uh, uh, farther. I mean, there's a there's a, lot, a thousand variables, but uh, again, they they brought the aircraft to to halt. The tower did a great job communicating with the pilot, uh, fire that they could see, uh, and they got everybody off that plane immediately uh, upon arrival of the fire department. They were, they were telling us everybody's off the plane. We double-checked. Everybody had gotten off the plane safely. I mean, even with so much fuel on there, it's 
Again, uh, don't know what the cause of the fire was, but there was substantial fire on the, uh, again, on the starboard side of the aircraft, and they were all evacuated off the port side. And as they're trained to do regularly, and they did it without fault, without f flaw. How many minutes did it take? Uh, for to, to take out the to, to take the fire out. Uh, you know what? It's uh, it, it was knocked down almost immediately. You have the four crash rigs there that surrounded the aircraft and immediately deployed. But since you've got a, a running fuel fire, uh, the fire didn't go out immediately. So they do what they call is they added a dry chemical agent to the foam, which it's compatible and it's called the slurry, which will cause it to knock down and break up the the running fuel fire. So couple minutes it was immediate knockdown a few more minutes later they had pretty much uh, completely knocked it down but again a lot of fuel on the ground and it's dispersing so they had to take a area a, a position pretty far away from the aircraft to make sure that the fuel wasn't running towards them and it was running there was there was a substantial fuel leak on the aircraft how far from the ma'am that's that's under investment that again that's uh Fortunate. How far from the end of the runway? I mean, how, did this plane almost run out of runway? No, they were about midpoint of the runway when they came to a stop. So they had ample room to slow down and stop. Uh, they weren't in jeopardy of uh, uh, being out of, out of runway. It's got to be left it is. This gets turned over to the NTSB. They conduct their investigation, and when they clear it, then the aircraft can be removed by the company. Uh, this is unusual. Uh, we have a lot of aircraft movement, but we don't have a lot of aircraft issues. Probably, I'd say, about eight years since the last time anything, something like this has even been similar. And again, there was no, no injuries on that and no, no, no fatalities on that either. Did you have a training exercise today? What happened to them? Uh, at some point, did you talk to the others on your way? I can, I, you know, this is uh, the District Chief Hernandez. He can give you further details. He's our EMS. He's our EMS chief officer who oversees all the EMS aspect of the uh, operation. Word, yes, ma'am. Juan Hernandez, J U A N H E R N A N D E Z, District Chief of EMS. Uh, as Chief Sampi mentioned, we transported about 20 uh, patients. Uh, we're still in the process of transporting some uh, with minor injuries at this time to several uh, hospitals. Uh, we validated our alarm as more patients presented themselves to an EMS plan today. Uh, minor bruising uh, and, as Chief Sampi mentioned, ankle injuries. As they were, as they were uh, exiting the aircraft, correct. Children, children as well. That I'm aware of at this time, not, no. All that I'm aware, of, all adults, adults, correct. No fire, no injuries from fire. Not that I'm aware of at this time. All stable. All stable at this time. Anything with smoke? Anything to do with smoke? All stable at this time, no. Minor injuries. We're still in the process of tallying that at this time. Correct. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I'm not hearing you. Yes, what was the other question? If you give me a minute. We heard Lutheran General. What, what other hospitals? Several uh, hospitals throughout the community. For, uh, first Community. Community First, I'm sorry. Uh, resurrection. Lutheran General? Correct. But you don't believe any life-threatening injuries? No, no, sir, not at this time. Okay, you have one of the passengers that said he thought somebody might have suffered a heart attack, but you don't? No, have no, no, not at this time. We uh, transported all precautionary. Okay. And your question is? Él tiene que, lo, lo puede decir al rato. Lo que lo puede decir es que ahorita este, transportamos 20 personas al hospital.
Got about 10 minutes of fuel left. I don't know who's talking to me. Yeah, we were looking forward to it, but it didn't work out. 
It's always something. Yeah. It's a busy day. They have shooters on the expressway. Yeah, I think they know. Is seven still here? We really didn't have that far to go before the end of the runway. Um, I wonder if we had to use the thrust reversers and if that just made everything worse. the wrong way, 8,000 feet. So he's looking at the warnings. It goes from one to two to three to just let you know you're getting close to the end there. She showed me those tick marks. I said you had to be longer than that. 13,000 feet long. Well, yeah, for very good reason. It has uh, about 500 feet of crush bricks at the end.
Oh, that's hilarious. Those are his teammates making fun of him. Well, it's getting dark. Affiliates that Hillary Clinton press conference now available on HD2 as well as SD2. 